Hello there everyone and welcome to a new episode of Is It Worth It? And today we'll be doing some corp solos. I realise in the background some duo clips playing but that's just as an intro because next time I will be doing corp duos to just compare and contrast the two for you guys. But yes, this is corp solos and just like in the Barrows video what I'm going to do for you guys is I'm first going to show you the method, then I'm going to show you the drops and then I'm going to give you a verdict. Okay, so first off, just a really quick apology, some of the Fraps recordings actually have scan lines on for like a couple of frames at the end, which might get a little bit annoying. At first I thought it looks cool, but it is quite consistent. Hopefully though that won't affect your enjoyment of the video and let's get stuck in first with the method. The first thing I should point out is that if you want to use the solo method that I use, you will need goliath gloves and they require 500 kills at the dominion tower. Now since the update that doesn't take particularly long to get, so if you do plan on doing a lot of corp solos, then get them. They're definitely worth it, they'll make you use less brews and make the kills go a lot more smoothly. So the first thing you want to do is rock up to corp in gear as close to what I've just showed you as you can. It doesn't matter if you don't have Vampirism Aura or Dread Nips or the Dominion Marker, but they do all massively help. Penance is actually the best aura to have here, but mine's on cooldown at the moment. You'll notice that I've come along with my bow and shield equipped and not a spear, and that's simply because it will save you an inventory space. After you overload, you can do the whole brew, drop it, and then when you use your spear, you have the inventory space for your shields to pop into. So this is how you'd start the kill without goliath gloves. You just stand there and spear it, and you do that for pretty much the whole kill, except for obviously when the core came out. We do have goliath gloves though, so what we're going to do is we're going to get our spec out the way, making sure our stats are 125 when we do, and then we're going to take off our bow, and stand there in just our spectral, and we're going to punch the corp beast with our goliath gloves. I should mention that if you do have a divine or an Elysian, bring that over a spectral, I don't, and I'm not going to buy one anytime soon because they've gone from, well the Divine's gone from 700 mil to I think it's 445 at the moment in like 3 weeks, so I'm not going to touch that anytime soon. But like I say, if you have it, bring it. Anyway, moving on to why we actually use the Goliath Gloves. Now, you'll notice that sometimes when I punch, I leave a fiery trail behind my fist. Now that's a special attack and what that does is it reduces all of Corp's stats that includes his defense, his attack, his strength, his magic, and his range, all by a certain percentage which isn't actually known at the moment, but it's it's believed to be around 10% to all of his stats. So it's pretty handy, so three specs and you've reduced everything by 30%. So not only will you take less damage, but you'll also do a lot more. The amount that Goliath Gloves reduces a monster's stats by the seems to be related to its combat level. So if I was to just go and punch a Hobgoblin or a Hill Giant, I wouldn't actually reduce their stats by much, maybe about 2 or 3%. However, when you're talking against high level monsters like Corp and Bandos etc, you will actually have quite a significant effect on their stats with every spec. Now you shouldn't take much damage at all in this first phase, and it usually lasts for about 5 minutes. It depends how often you actually use a special attack of the Goliath Gloves. Usually 3 to 4 specs is absolutely fine, and that tends to take 1 dose of overload or 5 minutes. And that seems like a long time, especially on a solo, to just stand there for 5 minutes and tank you for yourself. But luckily not only does Ganodermic make it extremely easy, but as you can see on screen now, it actually makes the second half of the kill extremely easy. All you really want to do is just stand here and use Soul Split Flick in between your melee deflects, and you shouldn't really need to use much brew. I mean, it is still corp, you will still get hit, and sometimes pretty harshly. So you will need to use some brew, but at the end of the day, it's made a hell of a lot easier, as I'm sure you can see right now. What you're seeing now is how I stun, and I would definitely recommend imitating this method. It's really quite simple in that, once you see core coming towards you, take one step away, stun it on rapid, and then get straight back on corp. This way you only actually miss one round of attacks on the beast, and trust me, that can be the difference between getting the drop and not. I know that sounds a bit dramatic, so here's a picture to prove it, albeit a little bit old. So, moving on now, here's just a little bit of real-time kill showing you just how easy it is to soul split flick and use barely any resources. However, I'm just going to speed this up and quickly apologise for it being a week since my last video. I will hate to make excuses, but I'm not at uni at the moment, I'm, uh, I'm actually currently home for Easter, and my mum's net is it's, it's shit. <laughs> to put it quite simply, and it actually went down for four days. But like I say, no excuses, um, the videos are going to keep on coming, so don't you worry about that. We're nearing the end of the kill now, and you'll notice that I haven't used any Dreadnips at all in this second phase. Now there's a simple reason for that, in that it stops you attacking Corp, 
This is quite easy to get around, but it's annoying, and to be honest, you don't need Dreadnips at this stage. Your spear's hitting fine, you've reduced his stats, so you're not getting hit that much, so there's absolutely no reason why you must have Dreadnips out. Okay, so we've reached the end of the kill now, I should make your Ring of Wealth switch, unless you're me, and you just continually forget, like, every single time. If you'll forgive me for that though, I'll divert your attention to the description where you should find my Corporeal Beast solo log. There's a little bit under 150 kills on there at the moment, and I've used these to do all of my analysis in the verdict section that's coming up after these clips of some of my solo drops. Now, unfortunately, but not unsurprisingly, none of those 150 drops were anything interesting, not even a holy elixir, so I am going to speed them up because otherwise this will be a very, very boring part of the video, and I'm going to get to the verdict now. Okay, so averaging out over all of my 150 solos, then every 10 kills, I use 1,000 Gano Flakes worth of my Ganodermic armor, 100 Brews, that's 4 dose, uh, 28 Super Restores, that's also 4 dose, 5 Overloads, and 5 Prayer Restores, they're also 4 dose. Now that comes to a total of 2.5 million GP, so that's 250k per kill, which doesn't sound too bad at first. When you run some analysis on the drop log though, you find out that the average value of your drop is 168k and that comes pretty much from onyx bolts e and cannonballs if you don't get either of those drops for a while then i'm sorry but you're gonna probably lose money that is of course unless you get a sigil now this is where the critical numbers come in how often must you get a sigil to make this worth it if we assume that every sigil you get is a spectral then you will need one every 262.5 kills and that is far too common for a spectral drop. Luckily, however, not all sigils are spectral, and the other three are worth considerably more. So if we weight them roughly and say that Elysian and Divine are twice as rare as the other two, and then take the averages, assuming that Divine and Elysian have the same drop rate, and that Arcane and Spectral have the same drop rate, then we get something that looks like this. If we work through and solve, then we do eventually find that we would need a drop rate of 1 in 1000 658, that's for absolutely any sigil, 1 in 1658, which is reasonable. We can get more accurate though if we use my clan's drops. Now we don't have like a massive drop log so I can't get exact drop rates, but what I can do is get a good ratio, and that's because we have over 300 sigils logged. So I can get a good ratio, which actually turns out to be that for every one sigil you get, there's a, a 0 0.28 chance that that will be a divine or an Elysian, and a 0 0.72 chance that that will be a spectral or an arcane, so 70 to 30 percent roughly. And based on those figures, we have a new drop rate of needing 1 in 1,464 to be a sigil to make this method uh, break even. I'll put a link in the description to our clan website, and if you look in the banner, you can see all of our sigil drops. So if you want to check my maths, then do please feel free. Also, you never know, you might want to join. And we're never one to shy away from new members, so if you fancy it, then go for it. For now though, just like the Barrows episode, I'm going to get onto the ratings and score it in four categories. Now based on the analysis that we've just done, I'm going to give it a 1 for cash. I would have given it 0, however, that would be a little bit unfair, because if I was to do this for a much longer, then I will eventually get sigils and hopefully make some profit. However, that's a lot of time to invest, and so I don't feel it actually deserves much more than a 1 because it is a lot of time. For fun, however, it's turning things round with a very nice 4 out of 5. And also simply because you never get bored of soloing corp and sitting and watching the drop, knowing that even though it's a minute chance, there is at least a chance that you're about to get what is the best drop in the game to yourself. That's a divine, it's, it's simple as that. And thinking to yourself, what if I soloed a divine? It makes you want to go back, because you know that if you do it for long enough, it will eventually happen. And you never know, it might just be this trip that you get it. Now Freeze, it scores a nice 3. Now, sometimes you may have a tricky kill and you might have to telly if you simply just don't get any Goliath specs, but that's incredibly unlucky and although it does happen, I'm not going to consider that when I give it ease. Generally, Solar Incorporeal Beast is actually really, really easy. So the final criteria to give it a rating in is requirements. You may remember in my Barrows video, I gave it a rating out of 5, however, I don't use it in the total score, which I'm going to use to calculate a kind of league table if you like. 
However, to avoid confusion, I'm no longer going to give it a number out of 5, I'm going to give it simply a word. So, are the requirements easy, mediocre, or hard? And for Corp, they're hard, because at the end of the day, you need to excel in something, whether that be the fact that you're a low level with Turmoil and Soul Split, or whether that just be that you might only have Piety, but you have Goliath, Gloves, and Elysian, and Dreadnips, but you need some specialist gear to solo Corp. So, for that, it does get a hard rating. We're left with a total score then of 8 out of 15, which is quite reasonable. If you have a free hour, then this makes Corp a viable option for a little bit of extra cash, because you never know, that might well be your lucky hour. If we take a look at everything we've done so far then, bearing in mind that this is a fairly new series, we currently only have two things on there, and that's Barrows and Corp. So all I can really say to you guys is that Solo Corp is definitely a better option than Barrows if you fancy making a bit of GP. But obviously, as this series goes along, hopefully, I'll get some more things for you guys to check out. And remember, next time we'll be Corp Duos. Now, that will reduce the cost, i.e. that will reduce the 80k. And you never know, I might have a signal to show you. But until then, guys, take care and be aware.